Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us on our uh, spring release webinar. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just run through a few slides. Um, so today we're going to be running through releases 839 to 841 of CompuCare. 841 released just a couple of weeks ago. And um, today on the webinar, I'll be joined by my colleagues, Tom and Mark. So today we'll be going through uh, a number of enhancements that we've made within the system. Um, there's been quite a large focus on changes to the clinicians app. We've also looked at um, increasing the um, configuration around next free searching for um, the next available appointments and we've just looked at general um, system enhancements in terms of trying to improve some of the processes within CompuCare. So what I'll do is I'll run through um, some of the features sort of at a, a slide level and then what guys will do is they'll take you through and demo some of the individual features as well. Just before we get going, um, we have uh, up in the, the top of the uh, the window that you're in, we have the Q&A section. So if you have any questions as we uh, we go through, pop them in there and then we'll try and answer them. But there will be an opportunity at the end for us to um, answer those questions as well for the group and to answer any other questions that might come up. So we'll start off then, we're just looking at some general enhancements. So. First one that we wanted to look at was a change that we've made around patient emailing. So you could already email out of CompuCare. Um, we looked in our autumn webinar at the ability to be able to put HTML um, styled or formatted emails within this patient email section um, so that you could include branding colors and logos and things like that. What we've done just recently is we've added the ability now to be able to mail merge in the patient ID so it's just a small change within here, but you can right click and you can insert this into the layout. And the reason we've done it is because as customers are starting to take up our new patient portal that we've previously demoed, um, it was important that you were able to give the patient their ID as that's what they'll need for the first time they log into the system. So uh, you can see just in the um, content here, I've put that in and again, you could format this however you want it. You've also then got the ability to decide whether or not you include or exclude um, attachments from the email that goes out. A number of customers are still choosing to include the PDF attachment or the appointment letter or the invoice or the receipt and things like that, just to make it easy for the patient. But it might be in time that people toggle that to know and patients go and uh, retrieve all their documentation from the portal but we've left that up to you for the moment so skipping ahead what we'll do is we'll just look at the next one and this is a change to the main patient area and the patient banner within CompuCare so we've had it commented to us a number of times that if you went into the patient record and we opened up in this case Stephanie Grantham and we wanted to see her um, home address what you had to do was click the cross at the end of those colorful uh, patient alerts that I've got on the banner there. And that meant that you didn't then see those alerts again until you reopened Stephanie's records. So what we've done just on the little uh, drop down arrow on the top right hand side, when you expand for further details, you've now got all the contact details of the patient, their phone numbers and things like that. You've got their address within there as well now, which is the change that we've made plus their registered GP in practice. So just a small change to make it easier to uh, to get to the address record. We've also within the patient banner um, put the ability to be able to copy and paste certain identifiers from the system. So you can see next to patient ID and this would be the same if you were using PAS or case number or NHS number as your primary identifier. There's now a copy icon there so that you can copy the ID out and paste it into another system. And likewise, the same would happen if I hovered over the patient's name. So Stephanie Grantham in this case, that icon would appear and I could copy and paste it. So we just had it fed back to us that um, medical secretaries or sometimes the clinicians themselves were needing to be able to copy those IDs or those names out to other systems or other documents. So we've just made that a little easier now for them to do. So the next thing, uh, again, sticking with the patient area is looking at um, search abilities. So normally people have this set to sort of system ID or patient name. So you could search for Grantham in the case of my last patient, or you could search for patient number 56 or whatever her number might be. Um, 
We also had the ability to be able to search by mobile number. We were asked to expand this so that you could search by uh, main home number as well. So in, rather than have two different options for it, we've created the one which is highlighted there. And again, you could now search a phone number and it'll look across all the patient's phone number fields to try and identify that record. Um, we still have the advanced search screen. So if you want to search on combinations of certain postcodes and certain names and certain phone numbers and things like that, you could still do that as well. But just another little change on search options there. One of the other pieces that we've done, and this is within the main patient record itself, is We've got a number of new customers that uh, work within sort of ophthalmology. We've also got existing customers that um, do ophthalmology procedures, so cataract repairs, refractive surgery, and things like that. And um, whilst on the patient record, we've always had GP and practice, what we didn't have was an option to also optionally record the um, optician practice, so maybe spec savers uh, in a particular town and things like that, um, or the registered optician. So now on the patient record, so from that pencil icon on the patient banner, you can go in there and you can fill out um, the optician details if you have them. Um, it all just uses the standard referrer and practice code table, so there's nothing new there. It's just a couple of new fields that you can drag and drop on if, if you want to be able to use them. Likewise, when we're thinking about referrals that we might receive in for ophthalmology patients, if you're recording an episode of care, um, in terms of the referral that's come in, we use the same refer and practice fields uh, within there, but you can now obviously record the optician practice and the, uh, the referring optician if you need to. So just a little change there. Those fields are also available in the uh, patient letters as well. So if you're writing back to both the patient's GP and the patient's optician, you can do that as part of your sort of clinic discharge letters and things like that. Okay, so this one's just a, a small little usability change. So you can see on my screenshot here that Stephanie Grantham's patient records open, that we've got a couple of live tiles showing out patient bookings and inpatient bookings. Um, we had it commented to us that actually it'd be useful for the surgical bookings tab to be able to do this as well. So we've done that now. So you can see there when I just bring that up uh, magnified a little that we've now got a live sort of date uh, and time on that tile for the next surgery for that patient. So when you come in here, hopefully everything's then just available at a glance rather than having to drill into certain records. OK, so moving away from the patient record and looking at um, outpatient management, what we um, have done within here is we've made some changes to the way our uh, outpatient next free and our uh, next free multi booking screens work. So these screens have existed in CompuCare for a while and they were there to do exactly what they say, which is to find you the next available appointment for a patient based on the criteria that you're searching on. So you can see here I've got a few set up to find me the next available available GP or find me someone that can do a cataract initial appointment and things like that. The problem we had on this screen was these saved configurations that you can come in and press play on to just straight away search for what you're looking for. They were cutting off the um, the name of the, the configuration that you'd saved. Some of the menu options were behind the dot, dot, dot. And they were taking up quite a lot of space on the screen when they didn't really need to. So from uh, version 841 onwards, you'll see that uh, we've changed this to now um, make them a bit smaller, make them a bit wider so you can get the full name in. We've taken the dot, dot, dot menu away and placed it up the top so you can see that we've got icons for new and save and pin and edit and delete there. Um, so they all work just as they did, but they're just a little bit more accessible to the users. And we've made the play button a little bit more obvious as well. Previously, it used to be a little sort of ready colored um, button, the same as the, um, the tile itself, but now we've got a little orange play button on there instead. So next free still works exactly as it did. We've just changed the look and feel of how that will appear on the right hand side of the user's screen when they open the, uh, the next free searching. 
So the next one then is within our clinician's view screen. So we've presented the clinician's view previously as the uh, screen that the consultant would be logged into when they're attending the uh, appointment with the patient. And that screen, as we've been through before, obviously gives you the ability to fill out assessment forms and clinical notes, to request um, orders, to raise prescriptions and things like that. The screen that the consultant sits on in between appointments is the one that I've got on screen at the moment. And what we had on here was in the reading pane on the right hand side, you could click on one of these patient rows in the grid and it would then tell you in the reading pane what that appointment was. Was it face to face or was it um, a video call or was it a phone call and things like that? But you had to click on it to find out. And um, feedback was that the consultants wanted to see their clinic list and know exactly what they were doing without having to click between the records. So we've We've got a new uh, field there called contact type. You can see it uh, presents face to face when the patient's meant to be in clinic in the hospital. It presents Teams consultation if it's a Teams consult. And if this was the day of the consult, it would highlight that join meeting option just below it. And if it's a telephone call, it will present um, certain phone numbers as well. So uh, we'll look at the, what's filled in for the patient and then we'll present the most appropriate contact number for them. So again, you can see there's a mixture of work phones and mobile phone numbers and things like that. So just a little screen change to hopefully make things a little bit more usable for the clinicians. If you want to start using this, you will need to use the, uh, the dot, dot, dots in the top left of this grid just to drag and drop the contact type field on and then all of this will start working. And then you could publish that layout out to your, uh, your clinician role users. OK, um, this one is uh, both a security role change and it's also a change really with regards to uh, forms. So we've been showing forms for a while as a way of, um, just as I went through before, um, filling out assessment notes or clinical notes as part of outpatients or filling out a post-op record as part of um, surgery or indeed, you know, anything that's happening on the ward. We've also seen um, some clients sort of dipping their toe in the water with the forms and using them instead of clinically, using them as more of a, an administrative form so that they could fill out certain pieces of information, maybe certain checklists of items they needed to do either before admission or before discharge and things like that. Um, and so we have with some clients sort of seen a, there being a mixture of both administrative and clinical forms going on in the system. And the feedback that we had was that the admin users really only want to see the admin forms. The clinical users only want to see the clinical forms because obviously the sens sensitive um, patient clinical information on those. And so what we've done is within forms itself, when you go and set up a new form, let's say it's called assessment form, there's a form category in the drop down that you can pick and say this is a, a clinical form. And then this permissions grid that you see on screen with the one highlighted down the bottom here is where we can grant or deny access to clinical forms. So essentially all it's going to do is limit admin forms to admin users and clinical forms to clinical users but um, hopefully that starts to make that functionality a little bit more usable within the uh, within the system for you. OK, so the next one, again, this is just a little change. Um, we've always had the ability to be able to set uh, for CompuCare the type of system that you're in. So are you in the live system? Are you in the training or the testing system? Um, that setting within the system has always done certain things. So it will have watermarked any of the letter or invoice printouts to be testing all the way through it and things like that. We'll have also stopped some of the outbound um, interfaces going out to other systems and things like that. But um, there's always been this fear that a user might um, be accidentally logged into the test system when they think they're in live and they start putting a load of live data into test and um, you know then they cause a problem because they've sent documents out to patients that uh, aren't the real live documents or they've got to redo all their work in live again and things like that so down the left hand side here we've done a little pill shaped icon which now says testing system and if I just expand that there again if I was logged into training it would say training 
training system. So just a little visual indicator to the user that they are in the training system. The um, window uh, at the top of CompuCare will also say uh, that they're in the CompuCare 8 underscore testing system as well. So hopefully we're just displaying it in a couple of areas to make it obvious what system they're in. So those are the general enhancements that I was going to go through. In terms of um, the clinicians app, as I say, we've made a number of changes within there that I'll just run through now. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the first one. Now, this is um, something that affects both the main uh, clinicians app website that your consultants and medical secretaries are logging into. And it's also something that affects the API that that uses to either get data from CompuCare or post data back to CompuCare. So um, one of the things that's sort of been described to us is that you've obviously got competing uh, users now trying to book into certain consultant diaries. So you have um, your bookings team in the hospital, obviously processing patients off your um, referrals received or follow-up appointment required waiting list. You have the medical secretaries or sometimes the consultants trying to book appointments through the clinicians app. And you also have potentially now hooked your uh, own websites into our API to enable um, online booking for prospective new patients. Um, and so those three parties were all competing against, say, 10 o'clock next Tuesday. And whilst CompuCare would reserve the slot and uh, no other user in CompuCare could, um, could use it, sometimes the API or the clinicians app weren't um, reserving those slots and you could effectively end up with two parties fighting over 10 o'clock next Tuesday. So this change that we've done here, both when the medical secretaries are booking within the physical clinicians app website, or when your own website is trying to make online bookings using our API, there are now methods there to be able to reserve 10 o'clock next Tuesday so that no other user can steal that whilst you're collecting all the information that you need in order to make that booking a, an official booking in the system. There are also methods in there to release that slot and a, an auto re release after a certain period of time. But we just wanted to highlight that uh, that's how this was now working so that um, as the first user grabs the slot, it's theirs until um, such time as it's booked or auto released. So the next uh, piece that we've done is really around the, the security of the login to the clinicians app. So um, we were using something which was uh, called Identity Server 4 uh, in order to authenticate the um, consultant or the medical secretary as being valid to log into the, um, the clinicians app. We needed to update that with a new security framework and we've decided to, as we're a Microsoft partner, look to Microsoft for that. And so what this um, will do is it allows us to switch over your clinician's apps from 841 onwards to using um, the Microsoft Azure MSAL identity service. Um, the other benefit of doing that is we're able to um, look at making your Azure Active Directory, so for your own logins within your network, um, a trusted um, provider as part of this um, MSAL login. So what that means is your consultants or their medical secretaries, if they do work within your hospital and have their own Windows account, their own AD account, they can use that same account to log into here. And it will also effectively um, enable single sign-on as well. So if they're in the hospital, as we have um, at some of our customer sites, and they're not using the main CompuCare app, but they are using the clinicians app to keep an eye on what the clinic list is and things like that, then they should be able to log straight in with that to the clinicians app. So again, that's something if people want to switch over to this MSAL login from 841 onwards, they can talk to us and we can help them switch it on and test it and things like that. Okay. Um, within the clinicians app, then we already have the ability within main CompuCare to schedule Microsoft Teams video consultations with patients. And there was already a join button in the clinicians app to enable the consultant to be able to join the appointment on the day of the appointment. What the consultant or the medical secretary couldn't do within the clinicians app website 
was to be able to book um, non-face-to-face appointments, which you can now do from 841 onwards. So um, if you um, see down the bottom of, of the screen grab here, uh, we have this is face-to-face -face toggle, just like main CompuCare. And if that's set to no, this contacts type field appears, and then they're able to pick from the drop down whether it's a Teams consult or whether it's just an ordinary phone call and things like that. And if they select Teams consult, what it will do is do exactly the same as if the appointment was booked through the main CompuCare system. It will automatically, on hitting save on this screen, fire out the Microsoft Teams uh, invitation link off to the patient and their um, Hotmail address or Gmail address calendar. And then uh, obviously the patient can join the appointment on the day and so can the consultant from the join link and, um, and then the two can uh, carry on as they would have done. So within here, we um, have a, an area that we've shown previously, which was around displaying uh, results back to the clinicians. So if the consultant has uh, ordered a, an MRI or ordered some blood tests and things like that, we already have the ability within the clinicians app, as we've shown previously, to show the results back to the uh, clinician that requested them. We were asked to um, change the, the grid uh, of the screen to uh, group the orders by patient. So you can see that um, James Smith in the middle here has had a, an MRI ankle um, sort of requested. It has come back as reported and there's another test result that that um, clinician has requested as well, which is why it's saying plus one more test. And you can see at the bottom, I've got plus five more tests against Zane Lowe there. And um, it's just really to make it easier for the consultants to go and look at them all together, because it might be those results mean something together rather than in isolation. The other piece that we've done on the right hand side is um, we've made it possible to be able to hide the results that you've seen, but also hide the results that are in progress. So if the consultant doesn't want their results screen to be littered with exams they've requested, but haven't yet been reported or had the results back from the labs and things like that, they can do exactly what it says here, hide the um, in progress um, results and only see them when they're all back. Um, so again, just a little change to hopefully make the clinicians app and the results viewing a little bit easier for the uh, for the consultants. Okay, um, so I think most uh, customers will be aware of how main CompuCare works. So. Um, the idea is that a patient has an episode of care created, they go on a waiting list, they get an appointment book, there's an outcome to that appointment and that drops them back to another waiting list which might be send for scan or need surgery and things like that. Within the clinicians app, um, when a, an appointment is um, cancelled, it was only previously asking for a cancellation reason and um, what it wasn't doing was asking for an outcome. I think we'd Previously, we'd assumed that, well, the medical secretary will rebook with the patient, so, you know, don't worry about it. Um, but uh, feedback was that customers wanted to have sight of the patients that were cancelled that needed rebooking so that they could perhaps get in contact with the med sec or could get in contact with the patient themselves and things like that. So we've now got the option on here to record an outcome as part of a cancellation of a booking through the clinicians app. And this outcome drop down then relates to um, exactly what the um, the outcomes are from your main CompuCare system. So that's where it's going and grabbing the data and then all those nice attributes behind the scenes of add to waiting list or close episode of care or cancel order Order and things like that will all um, apply based on whatever the user selects within here. Okay, well that's all the, the smaller changes that I was going to go through. I'm going to hand you over to Mark now who's going to take you through some of the live demo um, features within CompuCare and um, then I will uh, go through some questions at the end. Perfect, thanks very much for that Stu. Um, so good afternoon everybody and thank you for joining us today on the spring webinar. Um, so as Stu mentioned, I'm just going to be running through a few more of the enhancements that we've got between our 839 and 841 builds. Um, and after that, I'm just going to pass over to Tom and he's going to run through a few more for you as well before we close off the webinar today. So to get us started, um, the first one I wanted to take a look at today is related to episodes of care. Uh, this is an enhancement that's been brought out in our 841 build. 
And it just gives users the ability to create a, a default purchaser against an episode of care. This will just allow it to autofill when completing different types of appointment against it, uh, just helping save users clicks and uh, helping automate information. So if we have a look at this one in action, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into the episodes of care and we're going to create a new one. So if I just fill in some patient information here and fill in some of the mandatory details, we're just going to say it's a private GP referral. Uh, and I'm just going to fill in uh, the speciality there as trauma and orthopedic. Uh, so the important new field that we've added here is this default purchaser field you can see on the right hand side. Uh, you might not be able to see this automatically on your layouts. Uh, so what you can do to get this into the layout is if you just go to the settings cog on the right hand side here, and if you just click edit layout, uh, you should be able to find it in your available items on the left hand side here. So if you drag it and drop it in and click save layout, it will just save that into your episode of care layout for you. So for this example, um, I'm just going to select Aviva Healthcare and that's going to default in as the uh, default purchaser for this patient and episode of care. So if we just click save there and continue, uh, we can see that's all dropped in there. Um, so if I just come back out of that and we go to add a new outpatient booking just so we can see this working. So if we pull in that patient that we've just set that up for and the episode of care we was looking at, you can see that's the one at the top, 29th of the 3rd. Um, just going to make it an ad hoc appointment and say, uh, no, it's not a follow up. So then when we go into the billing episode, you could just see that it's brought in that, that purchaser for us. So it's automatically filled that in, uh, just saving us flicking between screens to find out billing information and bits like that. Uh, it's worth noting that this field has also been incorporated into choose and book uh, bookings as well. And uh, this will prove useful also when picking up bookings from waiting lists as users will not have access to purchaser information at that point. So it just again, it just avoids them swapping screens and bits like that. Perfect. So that's the first one I wanted to show you. If I just come back out of that, um, the next one I wanted to show you is also an episode of Care One. This is something that's been built into our 839 build. And what we've done is we've uh, we've added a new control onto the practice code table uh, for a tag to be added. So this pulls in our new tags functionality in CompuCare. Uh, selecting a tag will save it against that particular practice. Um, we found that this might be useful for things such as discounts that might be applied coming through for certain referral routes, for example, uh, or to group certain practices together for reporting purposes. So if I just go into our tag manager, just so we can have a look at the new tag that we're talking about. Um, I've set this one up called partner here. So if we just drill into that to see what it's doing, you can see on the available record types, we set it against episodes of care. So we should be able to pull it in from there. So if I come back out of that, if we just have a look at our practices code table now, uh, you can see I've got this open already. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this against one of our practices. So I'm just going to select Basingham Surgery, which is at the top. And you can see the new option for adding the tag is just at the bottom here in this field. So if we add that tag that we've got set up as the partner one. And if I just click save. And if we uh, go into an episode of care now, we'll use the one that we've just set up. And what we could do now is when we're selecting the practice or referrer, it should just give us a hint at this uh, tag and give a visual, visual representation of that. So it will do it on the practice. If you click the spyglass there, you can see it's got that blue partner tag at the top there. And it'll also do it at a referrer level as well. So if you know a particular referrer that might be working at that practice, so if we select Dr. Bridgewood for this example, uh, it will pull through on that level as well. So you can see it's pulled through the partner tag just as a visual representation uh, for users using these screens. So coming out of that and moving on, um, the next one I wanted to take a look at is relating to our patient ledger. Um, we've used us for the ability to be able to reallocate a deposit against a, a different booking. So previously in CompuCare, we've recognized that if a patient cancels a booking and then we rebook with them, uh, their deposit, which they may have already paid for the original booking, uh, is not, not being able to carry that across to the new booking that you've made. So to help with this, we've created a new view in CompuCare. This is called Allocate Deposit from Existing. Um, so just so we can see this one working, I'm just going to quickly show you that I've set up an outpatient booking for this example. 
Uh, we're going to use Miss Josie Frost at the top there. So for this example, uh, we're going to say that uh, Miss Josie Frost had a previous appointment which got cancelled um, and against that appointment, she paid the deposit required. You can see for this appointment, uh, she again requires a £50 deposit of which none of this has been paid. So what we're going to do, we're going to uh, change the deposit from the, the previous appointment and allocate it against this one instead. So if we go into the new screen, the allocate deposit from existing, the first thing it's going to ask you for is just those patient details. So if we fill in uh, Miss Josie Frost, uh, it's secondly going to ask you for that target booking. So this is the one that you want to allocate the deposit against. So you can see we've got our uh, target booking in there, which is the one we've created today for the 29th of the 3rd. You can see it just gives us the information so we can see there is a deposit required against this booking, but none of it's been paid at the moment. So if we just select that one, the final thing it's going to ask you is where are we pulling that deposit from now? So if we just click on the little spyglass, uh, we've tried to incorporate as much information as we can uh, into this field. So you'll see it's got some transaction details at the top there. Uh, it's just telling you the balance amounts as well and the date that it was paid. Uh, and it's telling you where it was paid, what the deposit was taken for as well. So you could see this is the previous booking that got cancelled on the 17th of the 3rd. And we can then allocate that against this new source. So if we just select all of that and click allocate, it's just going to come up with a warning for users saying that this will unlink the deposit against the old uh, the old booking and it will allocate it against the new one. Is this OK? So if we just click on unlink deposit. And then if we just go into Miss uh, Josie Frost's record here and into the transactions, we should see that that's worked. So what you can see is now uh, the deposit which was paid on the 28th, it's now been allocated against the new booking. You can see we've got the new booking date in here for the 29th of the 3rd. Um, so that's one way you can do it. We have incorporated this in se into several different screens just to make it a bit easier for different, uh, different users at the hospitals. So if I just unlink this deposit again, just so we can see different ways of this working. Uh, the first thing you can do is you can link it directly from the transaction. So you can see we've got our deposit here. If you just click link deposit there, it's going to pull you back into that screen that we've just taken a look at. And the only thing it's going to ask you for this time is the target booking. So you can see we've got our, our target bookings in here uh, and the top one is the one that we've created today. Uh, so that's the second way that you can do it. Uh, if we come back out of the patient record and into our outpatient booking screen. Um, the second way you could do it is by adding it uh, through here. So if you've got the patient selected and you click add at the top there, you can see we've got a little drop down, which is deposit from existing. Again, that's going to come up with the screen for you. It's filled in the details that we've selected already, so it saved us a few clicks there. And it's just going to ask you which transaction you want to put that against. So coming back out of there, uh, the third and final way you can do this, uh, we have added a new post action as well. So if we just click into this booking, and then if we just scroll down and click save, when the post action comes up, you could see you've got a new option here for it as well. So again, if you click on that, it's just going to give us a similar option there just to put the deposit transaction in at the bottom. Perfect. So uh, that's everything I wanted to run through on that one for you. Um, so the next one I want to take a look at is relating to billing. Um, We've added in the ability now uh, a new button in the billing drop down in outpatient bookings. Uh, previously, you could have a look at info only bills. So what we've done now is we've added the ability to uh, display info only bills with planned activity as well. So if a patient's got an order against their outpatient booking, for example, uh, you'll now be able to see the charges associated against that order as well. So we'll just use the outpatient booking we were looking at for the last example for this one. And if we just drill into that one. And the only thing that I'm going to change on this is I'm just going to add an order. So if we go in here. And I'm just going to put a service across against it. Uh, so we're going to go for the MRI hip one there. Uh, booking instructions are mandatory for this, this service request. So I'm just going to fill in NA for the moment just so we can see this working. You can see it's dropped into our orders field there. So if we just save that off and click finish there. 
And so what we should be able to see now is if we just go on the billing options, you can see you've got the info only bill, which was previously available. And we've now also got the info only bill with planned activity. So if we just go ahead and get that loaded up, you can see it pulls over in our uh, screen in the report preview screen on the right hand side. And it's pulled through the follow up attendance charges you would expect it to do in CompuCare when you do info only bills. But it's also just brought through that MRI one area scan as well now. Um, so users do have the ability to do that as well now. Uh, we, this should just hopefully give a fuller picture on our info only bills and just help staff take payments up front for both appointment fees and service requests as well. Perfect, so moving on from that one, um, the next two that I want to show you are related to orders. Um, the first one is in 841 and what we've done for this user story is we've now added the ability uh, for clinicians to automatically mark their orders as seen uh, when they print orders which are in a status of either report verified or sent. Uh, again, this has just helped streamline the process for clinicians just to help reduce those clicks. Uh, it is worth noting for this one that it will only uh, will only recognize any orders which have been printed by the requesting clinician themselves. Um, so I've set myself up as a clinician just so we can see this in action. So if I just go into my clinician area and go into the orders. You can see I've got an order at the top here. Uh, I have just pulled this through to a stage where it's at the report verified uh, just to streamline this through. And so you can see it's selected that on the right hand side in the reading pane. So if we just go on the print menu here and click the report internal. And I've just filled in some dummy data there just again so we can see this in action. So if I just click back, you'll see it's just automatically moved that down to seen by requester for us. Uh, so that's just again just to save clinicians a few clicks. Again, it's worth just reiterating that you do have to be, it does have to be the, re, the requesting clinician that re, uh, prints that report for this to work. Uh, if you revert it out, it will work as you expect. So it will just do it back to sent and then you can reactivate it to go to report verified. Um, if you do it on the sent icon as well, it will also do the same thing. So again, if we just go through that same process again of having a look at it and going back, you'll see it's pushed it through to seen by requester again. So that's the first one I wanted to run through. Um, the second orders one I wanted to take a look at uh, is something which has been brought out in our 839 build. So the main purpose of this next user story is to give users the option of whether or not when cancelling an appointment to reschedule any orders which are associated to that appointment uh, using a selected outcome. Um, so in addition, if a patient has orders which also need scheduling, they'll now appear when setting up an outpatient booking for the patient as well. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is before we have a look at this in the outpatient bookings, I'm just going to go into our outcome table. So this is what would require setting up in the uh, back of your system. You can see I've set, selected a new outcome here, which I've set up called reschedule orders. So if we just drill into that. Uh, there's a couple of things that will happen when I select this outcome on when cancelling an outpatient uh, booking. So firstly, it's just going to add them to a waiting list, the outpatient booking required for the orders. And the new toggle that we've added is this cancel orders toggle here. Uh, so when this is toggled to yes, if the outcome is used when cancelling a booking, the orders on that booking will also be cancelled. So if it's toggled to no, like I've currently got it, uh, it's just going to put those orders back into require scheduling. So it won't cancel those as well. So if we just save that and come back out of the code tables, um, if we have a look at this in an example now, I'm just going to go into my outpatient bookings again. And I've got another patient example here that I'm going to use for this one. Uh, so if we have a click into that. So the first thing it's worth noting that I mentioned, which was just a little extra we did on this user story, you can see now it just highlights to any users that there is actually two orders that require scheduling for this patient. So it's, again, it's just saving clicks. You can go straight into there and it just pulls up any orders that you're waiting on. Uh, so if we just use the full blood count for this example, and if we click schedule on that, you can see it's dropped in. You can select it and delete it back out if you don't want it in there. So that's also an option. And if we just click save there, and finish that one. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this appointment. Um, so we might say the patient wants to rebook or something like that. So if we just go into the cancellation reason, we're going to get the reschedule by patient one. You can see it pops up with another, another text box underneath, which is just asking for the cancellation reason for the orders. But if you can remember in our code table, we did set up that alternative outcome. So if we select that one now, the reschedule orders, uh, that's going to do a couple of things. Firstly, it's just going to let them know that the patient's been added to that waiting list that we asked it to do. And it's also just blocked out this cancellation reason for orders as well. Uh, so it's just saying that this no longer applies uh, because we selected this particular outcome and the order will drop in, drop back in to require scheduling. Perfect, so we'll just save that off. Perfect, so that's everything I wanted to show on that one. Um, moving into the next user story I want to take a look at. Um, the next few that I want to take a look at are all relating to availability. Um, the first one is around changing a resource from 24-7 availability and not 24-7. So previously, if a resource had already been set up with that avail with availability, uh, it didn't give users the option to change that to 24-7. Uh, if we think of an example where we might need this, uh, if uh, it might be required for an anaesthetist, for example. So they might require 24-7 surgical availability, but they may also need uh, outpatient availability for pre-assessment clinics, for example. So to have a look at this one, uh, I'm just going to use a clinician example. So we're going to go into Dr. Edwards here. And if we just go into the edit person there, and onto their clinician tab. So you can see now that there's two different toggles for 24-7 uh, availability. There's one for the outpatient, and you've also got one for the surgical availability as well. So for this example, uh, we'll try and go down the anaesthetist example that we've already come up with. So if we say that, yes, they need 24-7 surgical availability, it gives you the ability to add any tags to that availability. We will, we will run through that uh, shortly in a different user story. So if I just save that off and click finish there, and if we just go into our uh, single resource scheduler, uh, you can see we've already got the selected details on the left hand side here. So we've got Dr. Uh, Dr. Edwards selected there. And if we just scroll down, you can see that it's set up that 24 seven surgical availability that we've asked it to do. Uh, so now once we've done that, there's a couple of different things we could do. Um, the first thing we might say is, oh, well, actually from today, from two o'clock till five o'clock, for example, uh, Dr. Edwards has outpatient availability there. We can just overrun that uh, surgical availability that we've set up. So if we just uh, highlight it and go on add availability, it will just come up with an initial warning for users, users just saying that they do have 24 seven surgical availability. Uh, if they add uh, outpatient availability, it will just replace that for the selected range. So we're going to say yes, that's what we want to do. You can see it's pulled through all the details that we've selected in the scheduler there. So I'm just going to save that off. And click finish. And once it pulls us back into the scheduler, you can now see that it's just overwritten that 24 seven surgical availability just for the areas that we've selected there. So the next thing I want to show you on this one is if we had a, a surgical booking in here. So if I just select a slot for one o'clock there, and if we just fill in some uh, basic information again, I'm just going to make this an outpatient one for this example. So if we select an episode of care and just fill in a billing episode. Uh, so I'm just going to select self pay. And click save. Um, so we'll say yes, it's a follow up on this one and just click save. And I'm just going to fill in the theatre as well, just because that's mandatory information. So if we click save on there, it should pull us back into our scheduler screen once it's saved. And you can see we've got that uh, surgical booking that's just gone into there. So it's got all the information again on the right hand side. So the important thing that I wanted to show you now is if we now change Dr. Edwards availability from uh, off of 24-7 uh, surgical availability. So if we go back into her clinician record. And into the clinician tab there. 
If we just take off this 24-7 uh, surgical availability and click Save, it's just going to come up with a uh, warning again for the users. So it's saying there is actually bookings against this uh, surgical availability. Uh, but you can still override it. It says that but you will need to make these bookings ad hoc. So it, it asks if they want to do that straight away. So once we clicked on that, um, you do get an option in the post actions just to review the surgical bookings. So if we click into that, uh, this is any bookings that it's changed. So you can see this is the one that we've just quickly set up and it's just letting users know that it is now an ad hoc booking as well. Uh, so that's something you can do. Perfect, that's everything I wanted to show you uh, for that one. If we just come back out of that and back into our home screen. Uh, so the final two I wanted to take a look at. Um, the first one is restricting the procedures that could be formed in specific sessions. So the purpose of this user story is just to restrict procedures which can be carried out in both outpatient and surgical sessions. Uh, this will just help book booking staff decipher where a patient can be booked when looking at bookings options. So the first one I wanted to, uh, the first thing I wanted to just take a look at, this does utilize our tag manager again. So if we take a look in there, you can see I've got this one called injection slash vaccination set up. Uh, if we just have a quick look at the details on the right hand side, you can see I've got it set up against availability, code tables, outpatient bookings and purchases. Um, so uh, related to the user story that we're taking a look through at the minute, this is why it's linked into code tables. So if I select the little code tables there, and if we select procedures, you can see it's just it's filtered down by that availability tag, so the injection slash vaccinations one. And these are the ones that have got that tag against it. So we're going to use the injection into the eyelid just for our example uh, when we run through. So it's worth bearing that in mind. If I come back out of that now, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a uh, some availability against one of our clinicians that's got this availability tag against it. So if we use a new clinician, we'll do Dr. Summer for this example. So if we just set up some new uh, availability for him, and we'll just do it as outpatient availability. So we're going to say that it's every week on a Tuesday uh, between those two date ranges. And for this example, we'll just do it from uh, nine until five o'clock. So you can see this is our new tag field here. You can see you've got the option to add, add any availability tags, which will just limit down what this availability could be used for. So I'm going to select that and click on our new injection slash vaccinations that we've got set up. And once we click save on there and finish, you'll see that if we get that highlighted, you can see in the reading pane on the right hand side, it's included that availability tag. If we just open this up, you'll see all the uh, child availabilities in there as well. So you can change individual child availability tags just by going into them. So if you wanted to take off the injections uh, slash vaccinations tag, you can do that for individual clinics. That is an option. Perfect. So what I'm going to do now is just so we can see this working, I'm just going to go into our scheduler firstly. And if we just change a few things around in our filters on the left hand side, I'm just going to select our clinician that we're looking at. And if we go for that tag that we set up, so the injection slash vaccinations one and click search, hopefully what should come up there is it's just brought up our availability for that particular clinic. So if we just highlight one, you can see again, it just gives users a bit of a warning that this is injections and vaccinations only in this clinic. Uh, so it does give several um, several indicators to that as we go through the process. If I switch over to our multiple scheduler, and what you can see is we've got a few different availabilities set up here. So this is the injections, vaccinations, one for Dr. Summer. Uh, I've just pulled in two other clinicians just so we can have a look at this um, in a bit more depth. So you could see if we go on to Dr. Dr. Jones's availability, you'll see that there's no availability tags against that one. So if a user was to just filter this down, if you click on show more filters, you'll see you can filter by the availability tag. So if we select that one that we're looking at, and just hide off those filters again. You'll see that it's got rid of Dr. Jones's because that's not available and it just keeps in the available ones. So we could see that we could book anything into Dr. Summers, which is part of that uh, availability. Perfect. So if you do go into that availability and you add anything um, such as a different procedure in there, 
Uh, it just won't let the bookings users book against it. It will just uh, not validate it. So it's worth bearing that in mind. Um, the only other thing I wanted to show you is the next free and how this works in there as well. So if we just close off our scheduler and go into outpatient next free. Uh, there's a few different things that's worth noting in here. So if, if you can remember at the start when we was talking about this one, we set, selected this uh, tag against certain procedures. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to select uh, one of those. Uh, if you can remember, I just said we'll use the injection into eyelid example. And what it's done is you can see it's brought through that availability tag for us. So now when we, if we just clicked on any clinician and search it, you can see it's just come up with Dr. Summer's availability. So you can just limit that down by procedures and it's worth bearing that in mind. Perfect, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. Uh, the very last thing I did want to show you uh, was, uh, it, again, it relates to this tag manager that we've set up and it's just been able to uh, limit down that by um, certain purchaser types as well. So if we, if we just use the same availability that we've just set up, I'm just going to edit the adult record here. And if what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select uh, self play slash insured. So again, if you just think about the code tables that we went into at the start of the last user story, uh, what you can do is against um, certain availability, you can set whether you want that availability to be self pay and insured, and you can select that against the purchases as well in the purchases app. So I've just put this tag against a few different examples. I've put it against the self pay purchaser. Uh, I've put it against uh, Booper and against the Viva as well. So what we should do is when we pull this through into bookings, it should just find that for us as well. Uh, I'm just going to reset um, a few of these just to match the pattern, just so it brings it through. And if we just click save there and finish. Again, if we just use our outpatient next free example. And so you could, if all I'm going to do for this one is just add that tag against it. So if we go on the self pay slash insured that we've just set up against it, and if we click finish. Again, what it's going to do is it's just going to show you Dr. Summer's uh, availability for that. Uh, so they're just two user stories that we thought might be helpful against the availability of clinicians. Uh, if you can think of how you might use this uh, a bit more advanced, so you might do, limit it right down. So for example, uh, what different purchases you wanted on different clinics, as well as what different avail uh, options you wanted for procedures. It just gives booking staff a bit more um, usability in terms of limiting it down so they can find the exact slot that they need. Uh, the purchases option might be useful as well if you didn't want things like NHS bookings in certain clinics. Uh, you can just do that by the tags as well. Perfect. So that's everything I wanted to show you today. Um, I'm just going to hand you over to Tom and Tom's going to run through a few more of our enhancements. Thanks. Thanks for that, Mark. And good afternoon, everyone. Just before I continue, we'll just offer a quick reminder that there is a, uh, a Q&A section in the Teams bar at the top. So if you have got any questions, please feel free to pop them in there. Uh, so the first couple of enhancements I'm going to show you are within our letter designer app within CompuCare. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that. Now, the first, if I go into this inpatient letter, uh, we've added a stop date and publish date to uh, to our letter templates. So as you can see now, within the inpatient letters, I've got three letters here, two of them watermarked with draft and on stop. So if I just go into the draft example here, and then if I go into the info tab at the top left corner, uh, you'll see we've now got this effective from and then it's effective to date. So on the draft, you can see the effective from date has a date in the future. So as soon as it is that date, it will become the live letter. Likewise, I'll just demonstrate in the on stop letter here. If we go into the info tab again, it has an effective to date, so up to the 1st of March. So that letter is no longer in use. Uh, we've also added to uh, letter designer the version control and historic letter storage. So if I go into a different letter, uh, if I go into outpatient letter, for instance, and then I'll go into the thin outpatient letter, I'll just highlight that and you'll see the ellipsis at the top here. I'm just going to press that and then you can see version history. Now you'll see there's a number of different versions of the letter there, but what I can do is with the first letter here, if for example, I compare to current, uh, you'll see for example purposes, the obvious change there is the logo. Perfect, so I'll just exit out of that there. 
The next enhancement I'm going to show you is uh, to allocate admission time dynamically based on surgical booking time. So we've added this feature to uh, plan a patient admission time to ensure it's relative to the surgical booking time. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to go into a clinician. So if I just go in and search for a clinician, search for Joanna Butler. And then I'm just going to go into her clinician availability. So you can see we've got some surgical availability here. So if I just go in and edit this, you'll see it's all set out as it was previously with the availability type, the frequency, the date range and the times. We now have this box here with the default admission time override. So basically that means that anything, any sort of surgical admission that's booked between nine and 12, the, the admission time will be defaulted to eight o'clock. Likewise, anything that's booked in the afternoon, the, the inpatient admission time is then defaulted to 11 o'clock. So I'll show you this in action. So if I just exit out of there and we'll go into our surgical next three on the home screen. So within the surgical next three, we'll just search for Joanna Butler again and we'll go next. I'll search this here. So for instance, if we go for Thursday and 11 o'clock, If we just bring up a patient, we'll bring up Alan Abbott and then we'll look to make the inpatient booking relating to this surgical booking. We'll see here the planned admission time has been defaulted to eight o'clock to match the rule that we set within the, uh, with, within the availability. So I will just exit out of that and go back to our home screen. Uh, the next user story I want to show you is to add a bed plan to an inpatient template. So we've added this new enhancement where a bed plan can be set up and added to an inpatient template when making an inpatient booking. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to go into our code tables and go into bed plans just to show the example bed plan I've set up. So bed plan A, if I just go and edit just to break it down a little bit more. So just a, a basic bed plan set up there as you would. There is also this toggle here that says all to adjust discharge time. Uh, so that's set to yes. So therefore you'll see uh, the effect of that in a second when we go and make a dummy booking. So I'm now going to go and create a new inpatient booking. So if we go to add inpatient booking, I'm going to search for our patient, we'll just search for Tony Zamet. And then at the top here, we have the app settings wheel. So I'm going to press that and there's the save templates option. So by clicking that, you can see bed plan A. This auto populates the bed plan as set up in the code table. And it also, with that toggle being set to yes, it's corrected the, uh, the discharge time to match the bed plan. So I'll just cancel out of that. So the last two features that I'm going to show you um, uh, are related. So they're to display the next three search results by distance to patient's home address. So it's an exciting new feature we've added to CompuCare and now shows the site distance to a patient's home address when an outpatient booking has multiple sites available. So I'm just going to go and open a patient. So if we open Alan Abbott. And then we're going to go into outpatient next three. So now you can see here with this with this booking, we have this site option here. So what I can do is I can now add multiple sites uh, when creating the booking. So if we add a few different sites to this list here, and then you'll see when, when you add multiple sites, this option here. So a starting postcode, it will auto populate with the patient's home postcode. You can specify a different postcode, and then it also gives you an option to set a maximum travel distance. So for example purposes, we'll set it to 200 miles. And we'll just set it to any room as well. So for argument's sake, we'll say with this appointment, uh, we're looking for an appointment any day this week. However, the patient can only be seen in the afternoon. So I'll have a search and we'll see it's brought up some results here. So we have appointments available today at all four sites. And likewise tomorrow, and it gives a distance to the, to the patient's home address. Uh, following on from this enhancement, our outpatient next free multi booking function now allows multiple site and the same distance calculator from the specified postcode as well. So I'll just demonstrate this. I'll go into our outpatient next free multi booking. Uh, I do have a template saved here for a cataract review, uh, as we showed earlier with regards to the templates and the configs. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that. So you'll see it's loaded the four sites. And then below that, we've got 
a uh, an ophthalmology appointment just with any clinician and then we've got an ophthalmology cataract review appointment with a specific clinician who works on multi-sites so go ahead and press next for that uh, so once again we've got the starting postcode and it's pre-populated the 200 mile distance as we had previously as well uh, as to fit with the template so i'm going to go ahead and search and it will bring up the uh, site closest first with the result so as you can see four miles from the patient's home address there is an appointment available on thursday but if i go into the drop down you'll see there is an appointment uh, available in manchester um, the next free available appointment is actually in a couple of minutes time. It's 163 miles away from the patient's home address. So what I would do, realistically speaking, so we'll go for the reserve all option here. That turns some green and then we're going to go create. Just fill in the episode of care. And then that would take you to the outpatient booking screen for the two bookings. So these are all the enhancements that I'm going to show you today. What I'm going to do now is pass you over to my colleague Stu and he will run you through a few more enhancements. Thanks for that, Tom. That's great. Um, just a couple more bits for us to go to. One bit that we wanted to have a look at was um, just around our release notes. So we've had our release notes portal available for a, a long while now. Uh, you can see that uh, on the screenshot that I've grabbed here that I'm currently looking at, just tell me all the changes that are in uh, version 841. Over on the right hand side, it's showing me all the enhancements. The new piece that we've added to the release notes portal is this little blue camera icon on the right hand side. So if I just uh, magnify that up there you can see that that little video icon there will um, allow you to launch into now a video about that specific um, enhancement so one of the things that we've been doing for a while is we've um, been producing videos of each enhancement that we um, we do to CompuCare, but we've had those really as internal videos uh, produced by our development team that we kind of look at internally, make sure we're happy with the development or use as training material for our support desk or our projects teams to, to help implement that new feature. What we've decided to do is make those videos available to, to you as the customer. They're not sales videos. They're not sort of... Um, produced by our marketing team and things like that. They are the individual developers um, producing those videos. So they will be on test systems and, and not necessarily sales demo systems and things like that. But they are a really good uh, help in terms of having a, a two to five minute snippet of, well, what is that enhancement all about? Likewise, those little blue hyperlinks shown there uh, will take you into the knowledge base for the article write up about that enhancement as well. But um, you know, we think a lot of customers will benefit from when they're looking at new features, being able to actually see it in action on the video rather than necessarily waiting for um, the quarterly webinar to come along to, to recap it. So just to really highlight that that's there and available to you now and you can you can start looking at those at your leisure. So the next thing that I wanted to, to go on to before we get to the Q&A is um, really around a breaking change that will affect not this um, spring release of 839 to 841, but will be something that we'll cover again in the, um, the next summer release. And so what it is that from version 842 onwards, which will be available sort of very late April, most likely early May, we're going to be removing our um, Shack service, which is um, a service that we have installed out um, if you have CompuCare on premise at your hospital. Um, now, we've already sent some notification emails out about this over the last couple of months to every system administrator at all the CompuCare sites. And uh, this is really just to recap exactly uh, what all this is about and the fact that, that it's coming within the next couple of months. So what this Shack service is, is it was a way for CompuCare and the report generator applications to be able to um, from that double click of the icon on the desktop for it to be able to know what databases were available to it and where to find the database and the server. So where the live system was, where the test or the training system was. So um, we really don't need a service to do that anymore. What we're going to look at is um, distributed uh, client overrides XML files, basically a configuration file for the connection string to the database that will be rolled out either to every machine. 
So, you know, that PC set at reception or those PCs in finance and things like that. Um, or it could be rolled out on a user by user basis. So what we what we think will happen most likely is that rather than using the Shack service to control which databases Stuart has access to or Mark or Tom have access to, um, you'll instead use the native security features within um, SQL Server itself. So you will say that Stuart has access to live and to, to test and training, but perhaps Mark only has access to live. So you can do that by basically saying which um, groups of AD users or specific AD users have access to that database. Um, likewise, the only other bit that um, Shaq was doing was that it was perhaps controlling which databases people got in their drop down menus. And so this is why we say it's possible that you may, instead of putting a blanket um, connection string file out to all the PCs, you may want to roll it out so that when Stuart logs on that PC at reception, he gets live and UAT. But when Mark logs on, he only gets live available in the drop down menu. So again, uh, it's just really highlighting that that's coming. When you upgrade to version 842 or any version after that, you will need these connection string files to be rolled out to the, um, to the MPCs in order to keep using CompuCare. The files themselves are quite simple. This is just a little screen grab of what it might look like inside that file. And really all it's doing is saying, what's the live database called? So in my case, live, what's the, um, the server name called? What's the database name called? And am I using SQL authentication for this or am I using um, Windows authentication? In this case, it's, uh, it's Windows. So it'd be AD user permissions again. So I think this is probably for most people sat on here, probably far too much detail. Um, there is a whole knowledge base article around it. It's really just to highlight to any of the system administrators that when you go to 42 onwards, you're gonna need to, to bear this in mind as part of your rollout. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to uh, the final screen. I think we have had some questions come through along the way, so I'll just try and answer those now. Okay, great. So we've got three there. So the first one is, do the updates that uh, we showed for the clinicians app also apply in the clinician view? Um, the answer on the whole is yes. So if your clinicians are logging into the main CompuCare application and they have access to the scheduler app or they have access to the outpatient bookings app, then yes, they'll be able to book Teams consultations if that's what they want to do. They'll be able to cancel appointments if they've got permission to do that. So all the same functions that we showed in the uh, clinician clinicians app website would apply to that uh, as well. Likewise, when they're attending appointments, they'll be uh, requested to fill in an outcome to that appointment. And if they cancel an appointment, if they have permissions to do that, they'll be asked for an outcome. So really it was bringing the clinicians app in line with what main CompuCare was doing rather than um, Compu main CompuCare falling behind. All that being said, um, there is one slight difference. I did go through the um, viewing of results on the on the clinicians app website and it is ever so slightly different in main CompuCare. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag my main CompuCare system onto the screen. We'll just have a quick look at it here. So I've already logged into Dr. Jones's account and uh, we talked about the clinicians app but we have the clinicians view when we're in main CompuCare. If I bring up the uh, clinicians view you can see I've got my patients that are due to come in. Obviously the appointments were, were quite a while ago and what I've got at the top is I've got review results but when I click on the review results in this app it's going to show me just the results for the patient that I had selected. So in this case my own record and um, on here it's going to show the ones that have come back as reported or where the, the results are available are going to have a tick and the ones with the little clock in orange are going to say that you've asked for it but the reports have not come back yet. So you can see here that the consultant would be able to go and review the um, uh, readings from this blood test or they'd be able to drill into the, the report from PACS and things like that. Um, whereas on the um, clinicians app we showed a grouping where it showed all of um, James Smith's um, 
results that have come back and then Zane Lowe's slightly separately. In this case, they will already be pre-filtered for the patient that they were looking at from that screen because that's the nature of that that particular screen. The other thing that we would expect on a particular uh, clinician account is within the pinned tiles, it's likely that you might create them a tile of reports that they haven't yet acknowledged so that they would could have this light up. And in my case, Dr. Jones has got eight to go and look at. If I drill into here and then perhaps go on to Jane Dan annuals or something like that, they'd be able to view the report from within here. So if I was bringing this up, it'll bring up the little print view. And uh, again, if I just um, click on to that again, you could see the content of my sort of dummy report that I've created coming back from the radiologist. So that's the only difference really between what we showed in the, the app and what we've got in main CompuCare. What we think will happen really is that you'll potentially be using the clinician um, notification profiles to say if Dr. Jones has uh, results that are yet to be acknowledged or new results that have come in, you know, send a text message to Dr. Jones once a day to say you have eight reports that you need to go and look at and here's a link. That link will take them directly into um, hospital.com slash um, clinicians app, whatever your URL for that happens to be, and then they'll be able to go and look at those eight within the clinicians app themselves, because odds are they're not going to be sat in clinic at the point that those start to drip through. So that was really the answer to, to that one. I think just dropping back to um, the other questions on here. So uh, do the tags shown for outpatient avail availability also work on theatre diaries? So um, yeah, that was something Mark was showing you. So what we'd done is we'd added um, the ability to limit the procedures that could take place in a clinic, but that also applies to a surgical availability. So if you want to say, we're going to provision this theatre diary for Dr. Jones, but she as an orthopedic surgeon is only going to do hips on that particular one even though she's capable of doing knees we're not going to do knees on that Wednesday session uh, you could do that by limiting the procedures on the surgical availability and um, we also showed um, the ability to limit those outpatient diaries down by purchaser so this is going to be put on for purely this clinic is going to be put on purely for self-pay or private insured patients you can do the same in theatres as well if you want to so if you want to say I'm going to run a surgical session but we're only going to treat NHS waitlist patients in that surgical session you could do it that way or you could say this is purely put on to get the private ones through so again it's just more flexibility you don't have to limit your uh, clinics or your surgical diaries that way but it just gives you the option of doing so and the final question on here relates to um, the um, postcode lookup that um, Tom started to, to go through as part of making an appointment. So CompuCare for years and years has had the ability to look up the patient address by um, uh, from the Royal Mail postcode database. So some customers subscribe to that and, and, and some don't in terms of completing that sort of patient record when you first register them. In terms of the functionality that Tom showed you for the Royal Mail database, uh, sorry, for the postcode lookup as part of the, um, the outpatient next free searching. No, you don't need the Royal Mail database. We are not trying to look up the fact that um, the patient lives at 39 Abbey Road. We are just literally going from the postcode of um, that particular area. So when we're looking at the um, distance between that postcode and the hospital and perhaps some of the hospitals or the outreach clinic sites that it might be operating from. We're just doing a rough, you know, as the crow flies postcode distance. We're not trying to go physically from that address to, um, you know, by road to that hospital. So it's just giving you an indication that it's roughly five miles, 20 miles away and things like that. It's not going to be, um, you know, down to down to the meter. So no, you don't need the Royal Mail database for that. It'll work uh, using a different service. So I'm just going to check and see if we've got any other questions that have come through. Um, so there is one final one that's come through on here. So it says, um, can consultants run reports from the clinician's view? Can they see how many patients they've seen? Um, at the moment, no. What they could do is they could um, open the outpatient bookings app or um, open the inpatient bookings or surgical apps and they could filter it to say, show me, you know, bookings 
that were attended between this date and another date but no it doesn't uh, it doesn't currently give them a statistical report to say you've done you've seen this many patients or you've um, done this many procedures it would be almost a, a manual record count of the screen so they could see who they'd seen if you want those um types of reports at the moment it would really be the report generated to produce those uh, and the consultant would have to request the data and you'd have to um, produce it and send it off to them so that's how we would cater for that right now we could look at uh, reports through the um, clinicians app possibly we are due to have a rewrite of that at some point in the next year or so so um, you know in terms of other features that might be beneficial to the consultants that's probably something we'll speak to the user group about and uh, see whether that's a, a good fit for that app or not. So I'm just going to check again for any final questions. Uh, it doesn't look like there are any, so um, that's great. Thank you for those that have um, stayed on with us. That's That's been good to go through uh, this afternoon with you, all those changes uh, in our spring release. Uh, as it says here, we have our YouTube channel. Within the next few days, a copy of this video will be up there. It will also have um, chapters within it for um, the different uh, features that we went through, so you can easily find them again uh, if you want to uh, to review them and think about implementing some of those new features. If you have got any questions at all, uh, get in touch with us on the marketing email address or give us a ring and we can run through any of it. But uh, for today then, thank you for attending uh, this webinar and we look forward to seeing you again uh, at the next one. Thank you.